and how a global team of astronomers have announced they found what could be evidence of life elsewhere, and not on Mars, but on the much more inhospitable Venus. Soviet astronaut breaks silence before his death and reveals terrifying secrets. In the vast cosmos where humans have dared to explore the unknown, there exist secrets that have been shrouded in mystery for decades. Secrets concealed by space agencies, hidden from the public eye and buried in the annals of history. Imagine soaring through the scorching inferno of Venus, a planet where lead would melt like ice in a furnace, while sulfuric acid rains from the sky and the air pressure could crush you in an instant. What did the Soviets discover during their groundbreaking missions to Venus and Mars, and why did they keep some of these revelations locked away? But that's not all. A Soviet astronaut orbiting Earth on the International Space Station recently captured something inexplicable. A formation of unidentified flying objects drifting above our planet. Are we witnessing signs of extraterrestrial life? And could space agencies be concealing more than we know about what's out there? Join us in this video as we unravel the enigmatic secrets of Soviet space exploration, the tantalizing clues about alien life, and the unexplained phenomena that continue to intrigue and mystify us. The space race was a monumental competition during the Cold War era, not just between the United States and the Soviet Union, but also a race for supremacy beyond our planet. The Soviets in particular embarked on a space program marked by unmatched ambition and groundbreaking achievements that continue to amaze us. In 1957, the Soviet Union made a historic leap by launching Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite. Sputnik was a 184-pound metal sphere that orbited the Earth, marking humanity's first step into the cosmos. This event sent shockwaves through the world as it signaled the Soviets' prowess in rocket technology and their ability to reach outer space. But the Soviet Union's space program didn't stop there. In 1963, they achieved another remarkable milestone by sending Valentina Tereshkova into space. She became the first woman in space, orbiting the Earth aboard the Vostok 6 spacecraft. This was a groundbreaking achievement for gender equality and demonstrated the Soviet Union's commitment to pushing the boundaries of space exploration. These early successes set the stage for the intense competition of the space race. The United States, eager to catch up, launched its own space program and set its sights on reaching the moon. NASA's Apollo program eventually achieved this goal in 1969, with Neil Armstrong's historic step onto the lunar surface. However, it's important to recognize that the Soviet Union's achievements were not limited to Earth's orbit. Their ambitions extended far beyond, with missions to explore other celestial bodies, like Venus and Mars. These missions brought their own set of challenges due to the harsh conditions of these planets. Venus, often referred to as Earth's evil twin, has some of the most extreme conditions in our solar system. When the Soviet Union embarked on the remarkable feat of exploring Venus, they were faced with an inhospitable world that tested the limits of technology and human understanding. Imagine a place where the surface temperatures reach a staggering 900 degrees Fahrenheit, 475 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than a baker's oven, hotter even than the surface of Mercury, which is the closest planet to the Sun. Why is Venus so scorching? The answer lies in its thick atmosphere, primarily composed of carbon dioxide, which acts like a blanket, trapping heat from the sun. Unlike Earth, where our atmosphere helps regulate temperature, Venus's atmosphere creates a runaway greenhouse effect, making it incredibly hot. But extreme heat is just one part of Venus's hostile environment. Another challenge is the relentless sulfuric acid rain that falls from the sky. Yes, you heard that right, acid rain. These sulfuric acid droplets are corrosive and would be highly detrimental to any spacecraft or equipment. If you think that's tough, consider the air pressure on Venus, which is about 100 times greater than what we experience on Earth's surface. It's equivalent to the pressure you'd encounter more than half a mile underwater in our oceans. This crushing air pressure would turn most spacecraft into pancakes if they weren't adequately designed. 
Now let's talk about the Soviet Venera missions. The Venera mission was a series of space exploration missions conducted by the Soviet Union in the 1960s and 70s, with the primary goal of unraveling the secrets of Venus, often referred to as Earth's sister planet due to its proximity in our solar system. Despite the formidable challenges, the Soviet Union was determined to explore Venus. The Venera program became their platform for unraveling the mysteries of this enigmatic planet. Their early attempts were met with failure, with the first two Venera missions in the early 1960s ending in disappointment. Venera 3, for instance, launched in 1965, but it crashed onto Venus without sending any data back to Earth. It was a tough start, but the Soviets were resilient. By 1967, the Venera 4 spacecraft successfully touched down on Venus, marking a significant milestone. It braved the harsh conditions long enough to send valuable data back to Soviet scientists. This was a groundbreaking moment because before Venera 4, we knew very little about Venus other than the fact that it had thick, ominous clouds. Venera 4's data revealed that Venus's atmosphere was almost entirely carbon dioxide, devoid of oxygen or water vapor. It also showed that there was no magnetic field on Venus. These findings were crucial in understanding the planet's hostile environment. But Venera 4 was just the beginning. In the years that followed, the Soviets launched 12 more Venera missions, each equipped with improved technology and better preparation to face Venus's challenges head-on. Venera 5 and 6, for example, were launched just days apart in 1969 and brought back essential atmospheric data. However, the most impressive missions were Venera 9 to 12, conducted between 1975 and 1978. These spacecraft were larger, weighing up to 11,000 pounds, 5,000 kilograms each, and carried landers that could capture clear, accurate photographs of Venus's surface. These photographs were astonishing because they unveiled a world we had never seen before, despite Venus's thick cloud cover. The data collected during these missions was a treasure trove of scientific knowledge, shedding light on the mysteries of Venus. Yet the most astonishing fact is that the photographs of Venus's surface were kept secret by the Soviet Union for over two decades, only to be revealed later by a Soviet astronaut. This secrecy added an air of mystery to an already enigmatic planet. But Venus wasn't their only target. The Soviets had their eyes on Mars as well. In the 1960s and 70s, the Soviet space program set its sights on the red planet Mars. Their missions, Mars 2 and Mars 3, were equipped with cutting-edge technology. But what really stood out was the inclusion of a groundbreaking concept, the Prop-M rover, designed for autonomous exploration. This rover, small and square-shaped, was built to navigate the rugged Martian terrain with ease equipped with special skis that allowed it to move almost like it was hopping. What's truly remarkable is that it could operate autonomously, a concept far ahead of its time in 1971. The Prop-M rover was tethered to the Mars 3 spacecraft by a 15-meter-long cable. Its mission was to observe and analyze the Martian surface, essentially performing tasks an astronaut might do if they were physically present. The rover had detection systems that could identify obstacles like boulders or ditches ahead and avoid them. It was a marvel of ingenuity. However, the most astonishing fact is that the Soviets had the technology for autonomous rover operation more than four decades ago. Imagine the possibilities and discoveries that could have been made if only the rover had lasted longer. Now let's delve into the enigma surrounding the Mars 3 mission. Mars 3 was the first man-made craft to achieve a soft landing on Mars in 1971. This marked a significant milestone for the Soviets and put them in the lead for the race for space exploration. However, just 15 seconds into the data transmission back to Earth, Mars 3 went radio silent. The sudden loss of communication left scientists puzzled, and theories began to emerge. Some speculated that a Martian dust storm known for its ferocity and ability to sweep the landscape, might have engulfed the spacecraft, causing the communication failure. Others entertained a more intriguing possibility, the involvement of extraterrestrial entities. 
Could there have been intelligent life on Mars that interfered with the mission? This notion opened up a realm of speculation and wonder, igniting imaginations about what might be lurking on the Red Planet. Space exploration has always been fraught with uncertainties, but it also fuels scientific advancements. When missions encounter challenges or failures, they become opportunities for learning and technological evolution. In the case of Mars 3, its unexpected loss spurred the Soviets to improve their subsequent missions. By the 2000s, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was launched to search for traces of Mars 3, ultimately confirming its authenticity. The debris included recognizable items like the parachute and circular metal objects, providing tangible evidence of the mission's reality. The mysteries surrounding the Soviet missions to Mars persist, leaving us to wonder about the possibility of extraterrestrial encounters or what other secrets the Martian landscape might hold. These unexplained events in the realm of space exploration remind us that the universe is vast and full of wonders, waiting to be uncovered. As we continue our exploration of the cosmos, we'll remain curious and vigilant, ready to unveil the secrets that space may one day reveal.